nephew came back hey. from Wrangell. Oh, it's good to see you all again. Yes. Very nice. Very nice. Well, thank you for, for making the time <laughs> together. Praise the Lord. <laughs> well, um, I had to go back and, and look at the last video to find out where we left off. And, and uh, so we're going to start in at the promise of the Father that we were talking about last time. Okay. If you will turn in your Bibles tonight to the book of Amos, it's an Old Testament prophet, Amos. Chapter yeah. three. Amos chapter three, verse seven. <coughs> now you could underline this in your Bible. Yeah, because this is a very important statement. Okay. It's what the prophet says. He says, surely the Lord does nothing unless he reveals his secret counsel to his servants, the prophets. Or in other words, what God has on his heart, he must proclaim it to the prophets before it is actually done on the earth. Mm. So it was in God's heart to bring forth what is known as the promise of the Father. He had to bring it forth in prophecy first before he could do it. Mm. Promise of Father Govinale, Opave Kati Toko, the Kobe UJ. Ove Kati Toko, your prophesy, Govichi, Mape, Mate. Mm -hmm. And so when we read the book of Joel, this is the announcement of another prophet of something that is on God's heart. It's called the promise of the Father. So in Joel chapter 2, from verse 28 through 29, we see what this promise consists of. The prophet says, it will come about after this that I will pour out my spirit on all mankind. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your younger men will see visions. 
even on the male and female servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days. Would you please tell me or the verse, please? Joel chapter 2, verse 28 and 29. Sure. From, from the New Testament, right? Old Testament. It's the Old, Old Testament. Job. Okay, I see. Joel chapter 2, verse 28 and 29. Go ahead and read it if you want to. Joel chapter 2, verse 28 and 29. Ove no Nale Talk up we or colo Navi or Hafu O Hafu Fule No who be ya by ya me the pale Turka Pacasu Tojo to you No who be cho mo de pa Zuma mole No who be cho hapa de pale O ha or colo Turk ma bibita ramo to you O Jean Ovi or Colo Nale, O Jilpa, O Jima de Pa, O Colo Tor, Nave or Hafu to be to you. Hi, Ken. Good to see you. Hi, Pastor. Good to see you. Good to see you. Okay, we'll continue. All right. So now this is the this is the promise of the Father. Now chitiku woke I have a yo lotly or colo chove, can I ni e nichi hita and chico colo chovichi or pa ve kati toko heavy. And the fulfillment of this prophecy is found in the book of Acts, the New Testament. Chili futon chi le Olopo ku la ta ve li futon chi kavitia bi bi lovely kuku no tsuyali o kolo bi love you. So the old testament prophet says there will come a day when God will pour out his spirit upon all flesh. Hmm Ali fu pi tri o kolo yove o ha futa fu pi to yo kovit yo. And then in the book of Acts, we see Peter saying, this, what you see, is the promise of the Father. So in the book of Acts, we see the, the um, fulfillment of the prophecy, which is that the Holy Spirit is now being poured out upon all people. Uh-huh. And that that is not just limited to the the when the time when the, the apostles were waiting in the upper room. I'm sorry, please. Okay. It wasn't limited to just a one time outpouring when they were up in the upper room waiting for the, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Yes, yes. Peter responded to the people. He, he said, repent 
and receive the promise of the Holy Spirit. He says, this is for you, your children, and all those who will believe. So he's, he's talking about something coming in the future also. Mm. So, as we look at the book of Acts, it is a showing of how they received the Holy Spirit in that day, which is not a, a lot of different from how we receive the same today. So, yeah. Alright, so we're going to go to the book of Acts and we're going to do a study of the times when we can see people receiving the promise of the Father. Now, again, last time we were together, I spoke about the commandment that Jesus gave to his disciples. And he said, go to Jerusalem and wait there until you receive the promise of the Father. So his followers obeyed and they stayed in Jerusalem and they were in an upper room and they were waiting for the, the, the fulfillment of the promise of the Father. Acts 2, verse 2, it says, When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. So, yeah, <clears throat> Now, why is this important that they were all together in one place? Well, one thing is important is that there will be an outpouring on a consecrated area. And that was the body of Christ together for the first time. This is the first outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And why is it that, that the day of Pentecost was about seven to ten days after Jesus rose from the dead and ascended to the Father. Seven to, to ten days afterwards is when the Holy Spirit came. Why? That's the question. Well, Jesus had to fulfill his role as the high priest. Now, 
And that, that position of high priest, that responsibility, that heavenly position was not uh, done until he had fulfilled all the requirements of him. Over or two, eh? Jo Pocolo Pevioli Mushabi Muno Macolo Bila to Opon, Jo Mikologa, Rabitu upon your hati to be you. Over my bishi, Checheco, my bishi be patole, your ticket to Chevy. The book of Hebrews says that Jesus had to pass through the heavens carrying his own blood so that he can make expiation on the heavenly altar once and forever. So once the expiation or the forgiveness was done on the altar, then Jesus sent the Holy Spirit to fulfill his role in the promise of the Father. It's very important that we have this understanding that these people were together in unity, unity, seeking after, waiting for the fulfillment of God's purposes. Every day they came together and they had one purpose. One purpose. They didn't go to their jobs. They wasn't fishing anymore. They were, they were not doing housework. They were together in this room waiting for this outpouring of the Holy Spirit. They wasn't going to go anywhere until they were filled with the promise to the Father. This talks about faith. They had faith in the words of Jesus when he says, I will send forth the Holy Spirit to you. They believed that. So their their belief was shown in their everyday life of going to the upper room and waiting. This kind of faith calls for tenacity, or in other words, will not give up until you receive what has been promised.
Day after day, they waited. Hour after hour, they waited. It didn't come immediately. They had to wait. How many times do we have to maintain ourselves in faith, believing that God will do what he says he will do, but don't realize it the first day or the second day or the third day? Abraham waited 25 years for the Ab promise that he received to come to pass. Hmm. Abraham le shapita ve kati toko o te ona yo ge pe la tu ga la tu yo kani ko ga lo ta ve li ko ni chinga ko ga lo ta ve yo. I'm not saying you have to wait 25 years to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but I'm saying that it <laughs> will require faith on your part. Sometimes it might be that you have to uh, uh, keep pressing in until you see the actual reality of the promise come to you. Later in our in our teaching, I'll be teaching about praying for the sick and laying hands on, on the sick. And this also comes into focus about waiting upon God. Mm. Um, would you please repeat? It's, it's a little bit loud. Uh, the, uh, this about faith and waiting to see it happen is okay. going to come into play when we talk about laying your hands on the sick. And there are many times when you lay your hands on the sick and you will not see someone get healed just like that. And you have to continue to pray. You have to continue to lay your hands on them. Or in other words, you do not give up. You continue and you continue until you see the reality of the promise. <clears throat> Give up, go with your Ashunta P. Govinale, and Nimata Lupi, Rata E. P. No Bolo, P. Chevichile, or Peona Petla to be young man, go with you with it, Cabicho to Jovi or Colo, Rati Bolo Pitu Lovio. Many times when I pray for the sick, I don't see the immediate healing, I have to continue. One time I prayed for a lady 20 times, 20 times before I saw her be touched by the Holy Spirit. Or in other words, you cannot give up. <clears throat> the only way that you receive from God is that you have tenacity. 
you will not give up. That's faith. Mm. In Luke chapter 11, verses 9 through 13, Jesus says, keep asking, keep knocking, keep seeking, and you will receive the promise. Luke, Luke, Luke chapter 11. Uh, Luke, Ali, 9 to 13. Okay. 11. Luke, Ali, can I teach you? Eco, I Yeah, he is talking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You have to continue to seek. Continue to ask and continue to knock at the door of heaven, asking for the fulfillment of the promise of the Father. As Veda, my wife, and I travel the world and we go into churches, we see basically two types of people in the church. There's one group that they go to church because it's a religious uh, fulfillment of their duties. There's not much interest in the Word of God, and there's not much interest in the fulfillment of the promises of God. The only thing important for, for them is to fulfill the duty of going to church, listening to a sermon, sing a few songs, and they've completed this. But then there's a second group of people. They they read the word of God and they expect to receive what God has promised. They have a hunger to see God move. And they have an expectation knowing that God will fulfill what he has said he will fulfill. These people stand in faith, believing that they will receive something from God. Now I ask you a question, which of the two groups do you feel like will receive the promise of the Father. 
The first group, they have no hunger. They just have a religious responsibility. Do you feel like they would receive the promise? No. There's no faith. There's no expectation. But the second group, the ones that have this expectation, they are the ones that get filled with the Holy Spirit. So in the book of Acts chapter 2, we see these people, this group of people that have a hunger and they are willing to spend every day in the waiting of the Holy Spirit. So let's go to the book of Acts chapter 2. Again, we're there. Uh, let's read from verse 2 through 4. Verses 2 through 4. So, yeah, like, you know, 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 you know. Says, and suddenly there came from heaven a noise like a violent rushing wind, and it filled the whole house <coughs> where they were sitting. And there appeared to them tongues as fire, distributing themselves and arrested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit was giving them utterance. So, yeah, you ติจอติจอฮามุโนมาลุออคอบุยะลาเลยอยู่มือตาเวเยติเยออคอลุบีชิเวยูอามีฮาคาชูชูฮาเตติปาทะอยู่ฮาเตโอเวติปาเปตา
but we don't see it being experienced today because it was the first time that the Holy Spirit had come. I have seen many, many, many people filled with the Holy Spirit. But I have not experienced a rushing wind that shook the building. I have not experienced that. And there's no other reference in the Bible of a rushing wind when people receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I'm sorry, please. There's no other reference in the Bible about a rushing wind when people receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. No other. And just only one. Okay. So we cannot say that, oh, there's no rushing wind, so therefore there's no outpouring of the Holy Spirit. We can't mm. say that. Because we see people, we read about people being filled without the rushing wind. Another uh, manifestation <laughs> that we see in the first experience was the flames of fire that were over the heads of the people. I have not seen that manifestation. But it happened, it happened with the very <laughs> first experience of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And so we do not see in any other part of the Bible about the flames of fire over the heads of the believers when they receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Okay, so if you're praying for somebody or if you're waiting to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit and you don't get a flame, you probably won't see that manifestation. Those two manifestations were present with the initial outpouring of the promise of the Father. There was another manifestation that we see. And that manifestation I see all the time. And that is that they spoke with other tongues as the Holy Spirit gave them the utterance. 
Now that manifestation I see, and it is an evidence that you have received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, that you speak in tongues. It is very important that that uh, we understand that speaking in tongues is a natural manifestation when someone receives the Holy Spirit. The fire which was on top of their heads turns into a fire within their heart. With the baptism of the Holy Spirit, a person changes to where they are on fire for God. Speaking in tongues <laughs> is is also prophesied by the the prophet Isaiah. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 28, verse 11. It says that indeed he will speak to this people through stammering lips or in tongue. And so we need to understand that just like we've read before, nothing will fo- was, would happen unless it was proclaimed through the prophets. So here, here God is prophesying through a prophet that people will be speaking in other tongues. This is a good point to to stop because I'll be talking about uh, speaking in tongues the next time we come together. Uh, I want to ask you: Have any questions about we what we've talked about so far today? Or maybe you have a, a comment or an observation that you would like to contribute to the class. So if you do, if someone does, you can you you can take your um, microphone off a of mute and just say what your um, comment is. No, really, microphone, microphone, chita le, pole, no, pugavi, or chitoko, 
ก็ก็ไปจอล่ะจิตติกะเลยสลองกูก็ไปจอล่ะจิตอ่าติจนานิกะเวอยาสิทธาอุเวอิสยะคัมมะนะสลองอุเวอ่าตอไลจอยอเ
Oh, I see. Jawi kebi ohafu okolo batisan kayu betian takuk kabe cok. Rusan no okolo cela betian ta no ta dak ke pila betak kucebi uce. Fire ami kabe cok. Purification no ta dak ke pivi uce kabe uce. Uh, you cannot have the baptism of the Holy Spirit without having a fire that will purify you through a process called sanctification. Mm. Okay, time that we gave you or half no colo chela rabbi you. Lay purify me or no tokota yevitana sanctification. That the pivi, we shall make us a day chimp in but much of it choking up at lavi. Okay, we talk. What shall we use? When I see two people, one that has the baptism of the Holy Spirit and one who does not, <coughs> I see a great difference between them. One I see walking in power of the Holy Spirit, but also walking with the influence of the Holy Spirit to purify him in a process. The other person that does not have the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I do not see them walking in power. And I do not really see them maturing in God. That maturing process comes about through that process of fire. Hmm. Maturity, go with you, la da la ve, go with you, a mave or a mave or she on le coco. The suta go with fire, go with nale, da ke, pive, ove or she on no pebuti. It will touch your desires, it will touch your passions. Fire will touch these areas and burn it up. Fire, go with chile, lay on me, go with you, da ke, pilo, ve. I, I hope that helps you, Ken. Uh, I, that's my my opinion on that. Uh, no, 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 well, we have... oh, your answer is very good for me. So thank you so much. And now I understand it. Very good. Very good. Listen, guys, we're out of time. Uh, I have to prepare for another teaching uh, in a half hour. So God bless you guys. Let me pray for you. And then we'll get together again, same time next week. Okay. Uh, and please pray for me and for my coffee. Oh, yes, sure, I will. Yes. Father, I just thank you for your grace and your mercy upon this people of, of, of Asia. 
I pray, God, that they'd have a, an expectation of what you want to do in their lives. We pray, Father, for Allie, that he would be completely restored to health. In Jesus' mighty name, we thank you, Lord, for your grace and your mercy. Amen. 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 All right. Thank you so much. You're welcome so much. It was been, it's been very good to be with you guys. I, I, I miss being with you. And hopefully that uh, uh, we will be uh, in, in studying.